Loving can hurt sometimes But it's the only thing that I know When it gets hard You know it can get hard sometimes It is the only thing that makes us feel alive Keep this love in a photograph We made these memories for ourselves Where our eyes are never closing Hearts are never broken Time's forever frozen still So you can keep me Inside the pocket of your ripped jeans Holding me closer till our eyes meet you won't ever be alone Wait for me to come home Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we're checking out a beginner version of Ed Sheeran's Photograph. Such a beautiful song. I just did the original kind of dadgad uh, tuning version, but I know there's going to be a lot of beginners that want to play this song as well. So I kind of simplified it down. We've got the old capo on the second fret. And we only got need four chords, really. We need a C chord, A minor, F, and G. Now, if you're not familiar with how to play any of those chords, you want to hop over to the beginner's course on my website and check that out, because we're not going to go through how to play the chords, OK? But one thing that I will mention, uh, if you're going to play the F chord, I nearly always play it with my thumb over. And for most beginners, that's going to be really difficult. But if you see me doing it, it's just habit. It's, you know, of course, I can play regular bar chord F. If you're struggling with bar chord F, you could also play F major 7 as well. So just using fingers 3, 2, and 1 on frets 3, 2, and 1 of strings 4, 3, and 2. OK? Again, see the website if you're not familiar with F major 7. But you could always substitute that one for the F chord if you wanted to as well. Now, um, there's three uh, chord progressions or chord sequences in it that you have to remember. The intro and the verses are C for two bars, three, four, one, two, then A minor for two bars, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, to G for two bars, one, two, three, and then F for two bars. Okay, that's it. Loving can see Loving can A minor sometimes Two bars again But it's the G thing That I F And when it gets C Know it gets a minor sometimes. It is the G thing that makes us feel an F. Now the bridge is one bar of A minor, one bar of F, a bar of C, and a bar of G. Okay, so the bridge. We keep this love in a photograph See, we make these memories for our G When our A minor's never closing F is never broken And C's forever frozen G Then the chorus is C chord For two bars and then we go to G chord Two bars again and then to A minor You don't have to be an F Waiting for me to come see Okay, so the chorus progression there is C, G, A minor, F Two bars on each one So I'm going to recap now again So the intro and the verses Two bars of each chord C, A a minor, G, and then F. The pre-chorus, which is one bar on each chord, is A minor, F, C, and G. And the chorus is two bars on each chord, C, G, A minor, F. Okay? So it's just that you only need those four chords. Um, 
the trick is always making sure that you remember the order of the chords, okay? So I definitely recommend writing those down as little blocks because they're the blocks that you need to remember. Um, and remembering, of course, you know, that the pre-chorus is just one bar on each chord. The rhythm for this song, um, if we just put it on a C chord there, you want a bit of heavy palm muting. So using the outside part of the palm of your hand there, resting on the strings so that it gets all muted, okay? You could strum it lots of different ways. You could... Uh, Loving can hurt sometimes, but it's the only down, down, up, up, down, down, down. But it just sounds a little bit kind of, doesn't sound as powerful with those kind of happy strumming patterns. There's something a bit more menacing about the, well, not menacing, that's overdoing it, but there's something more powerful about the this other strumming. So if we start with the C chord, and we, we're going to do eight down picks in the bar. So we're going to play down on one and two and three and four and. But what the real trick is, is making the the one, the and after two and four a little louder. So you end up with this one and two and three and four, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and four. So all I'm doing is just on the on the accent of ones, I'm just pushing a little bit harder and trying to push through more strings. And in between, I'm just playing the bass note of the chord, really. Definitely worth practicing that on one chord. If you're going to have any hope of singing it and doing it at the same time, you need to practice that pattern so you can talk to someone like I'm doing to you now, okay? Because if you're not able to do that about thinking about something else, because you're going to be thinking about the singing, you've got chord changes to continue with, you know, there's lots of stuff going on. So definitely you want to be working on those kind of rhythm patterns so that they become an automatic thing. You can't uh, expect to be thinking about the chords, the chord changes, the rhythm, the accents, and the vocals at the same time. It's probably not going to work for you, okay? So definitely working on that pattern just on, the, on one chord, first of all, would be a good idea. Then practicing playing through the different progressions is the next kind of stage. And then you want to think about adding the vocals on, okay? In the chorus, you probably don't want to have the palm mute thing. So I'd keep this on for all of the verses. Okay, into the pre-chorus. We keep this love on a photograph. We make these memories for ourselves. Where our eyes are never closing, hearts are never broken, time's forever frozen still. So you can see inside the pocket of your ripped jeans. You can see I'm still doing the same strumming pattern. But without that palm muting, it sounds a lot bigger. Sounds pretty cool when you go back. Okay, so it's a really not, it's what you're after is contrast there between the verses and the choruses. Because if you played it with like the same strumming pattern all the way through it, it kind of probably get a bit boring to be frank so you always want to think about trying to make your verses and your choruses just a little bit different normally the choruses are bigger or louder or more active more strumming and the verses are a little more quiet and a bit more subdued um, as a general rule but sometimes it's the other way around so playing the riff in this tuning is totally possible, although most beginners will probably find it a little difficult because it's it's kind of fast and you've got to pick out individual notes from the chord quite quickly. But I'll go to a close up and give you a quick look at it for those of you that fancy a bit of a challenge. OK, let me just play the riff through once real slow. <laughs> So basically we've got this little riff that goes one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. But when we add the bass note and the bass note moving around it becomes a little more complicated. So we're going to start with the C chord. We play the fifth string, second string, lift off first finger and play that string, put it back down. So one and two and then three is the bass note again, then the third string. Little finger goes down in the third fret of the fourth string. It's third three frets above the capo, that is. And then little finger off and play the fourth string again. So one and two and three and four and. And two and three and four and. Okay, 
okay? I'm using all down picks there, but there's lots of different patterns that you might like to experiment with to see, you know, what you feel most comfortable with. But that's the first step is just getting it on that one chord. Okay, once you can do that, we want an A minor chord. And to do that, really, we just lift off third finger. Okay, you might want to use your third finger there to play the... Uh, the note F, the, the uh, third fret of the fourth string. You don't have to, you could continue to use the little finger. Might even be an advantage because now you've got to hold those two fingers down and move third finger down to the uh, third fret of the thicker string and same thing again. And now we want an F. Now. There's not many ways around using your thumb to play the bass note, to be honest. And it is, I've got to admit, it's kind of tricky to be able to hold that thumb down while I'm lifting off my first finger. The other option... <laughs> is, is also difficult, so fretting the bass note with the first finger, second finger, bass note, little finger, third finger. Or you just maybe just play F for that little bit. So you have like a... Now notice there that I've switched to alternate picking. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, lots of different options there for playing this one. Don't feel like you have to add that in though. It's kind of nice to have it on the C, but don't, you know, don't fret if you can't fret the F. Okay, I'll just go about strumming that one all. Yeah, it kind of works, doesn't it? There's a nice version. So just C, one and two and three, four, one and two and three, four, one, two and three. Just lifting off first finger. Even strumming. Obviously I'm putting the F down for the G, so I'm putting the C note down for the G chord. So I'm playing G with just third and fourth fingers and leaving first finger down. F. You could even, if you wanted to. Lots of versions, lots of ways of doing this. This isn't how Ed Sheeran actually plays it, you know. So this is trying to work out some ways that kind of work nicely for beginners. And that's something that you want to have a bit of a play about with to suit your ability level, your technical ability. I really hope you enjoy playing this tune. You beginners don't get too hung up on trying to play that little riff part at the same time. I don't think I mentioned it earlier, actually, but Ed Sheeran doesn't play it that way. He doesn't play the riff. He uses a looper pedal. So he's got a little pedal that kind of records and then copies back what it is he played. So he just plays it once. He goes, click. Click. Do, 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 do. And then that melody is playing, and then he can play the chords over the top, okay? I'm sure he'd be well capable of playing it there if he wanted to, but, you know, he's not doing it that way, so don't feel under pressure that, oh, I'm hopeless if I can't do it, because it's pretty difficult to do that, and it requires a bit of dexterity or, you know, to, to play it. Um, you might want to go and check out the other version I've done of this song. So I've done one in uh, Dad Gad tuning, which is the way Ed Sheeran seems to be playing it these days. I think he recorded it different, but the way he's playing it now using Dad Gad tuning sounds real sweet so I've done a lesson on that as well so you might want to go and check that out um, so uh, yeah really hope you enjoy it. plenty more Ed Sheeran songs over on my website including Thinking Out Loud and A-Team and all of those other wonderful songs of his so do go and check that out a lot easier to find all the songs on the website but I really appreciate you subscribing to my YouTube channel if you dig what I do I'll see you for plenty more very soon you take care of yourselves bye bye